You're listening to the New World To Go podcast with your hosts, Redbird and BDLG. Hello and welcome to another episode of New World To Go. I'm your host, Redbird, and with me is BDLG. Bordy, episode number 84, open beta episode. Uh, Yo, uh, dude... We got a lot to talk about today, but but one of the things is very special to my heart because it is uh, the fact that we are on schedule for release on September 28th, mm-hmm. and that makes yeah. me feel good, dude. We're we're this is the if you think about it, dude. We've only got after this episode, we've only got one more episode that is pre-launch, and then, dude, we'll be we'll have we'll be covering a game that is launched, which we haven't yes. done that for two years now. So it's pretty crazy to I think know. about. It's pretty crazy to think about, dude. It is, man. I'm excited for that day to come. It's right around the corner, the 28th, where as of this recording is the 12th. So we are very close, man. And if we have been very, very busy, so the time is like going by incredibly quickly. But my goodness, I am very excited for it to happen. For sure. For sure. A real quick, guys, a quick reminder, if you haven't left a five-star rating and review yet on, on your chosen podcasting platform, please do so. It does help us out. And the directory help people find us. Obviously, uh, uh, at launch, we might have some new people looking for a podcast. So uh, help us out and and be sure to leave that rating. And then if you're on YouTube, just hit the sub button. You know, it's free. Just hit the sub button. Uh, get notifications when these videos go live. You get to look at two bald men talk about the video game that you like. I think that's I think that's a reasonable exchange, right? You hit the button yeah. for free. You get to see two bald guys talk about New World, right? Yeah. That's okay, right, yeah. perfect. Uh, now that we've cleared up the exchange of the sub button on YouTube. Uh, so basically, also, uh, we uh, want to quickly remind you, and, and this is important because they did, they New World's official account responded to a questions about being on time for the launch schedule, and they confirmed that they are still on time for the September 28th event. So if you haven't pre-ordered the game already, please, I mean, you should do so. Uh, you know, hopefully there's a preload. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, but dude, it's only two weeks away. So, so, you know, if you're wanting to play New World, we're we are, we are honing in on it. So be sure to... I would recommend Steam, to be honest, because if you go to their website and buy it, it will just give you a Steam code. So just save yourself the extra, you know, the extra step and just, you know, purchase it on Steam. Right, Bordy? Yeah, that's I mean, it. I'm not worried. I get paid by Steam or anything. I'm just saying, I, I as a user, as a as your friend Redbird, I would recommend that you buy it on Steam. There we go. Uh, shout out, yo, real quick, more shout outs here, and then we're we're gonna get in there. I promise. Shout out to the Discord, dude. Uh, the Studio League Discord. We're at 4K, baby. Four zero zero zero. Uh, yo, uh, big thanks to you guys for joining us, for coming in there to chat with us. Uh, our our guild is based out of there. Our company is based out of there. And obviously, just uh, tons of, of New World content and everything like that. Uh, 4,000 yeah. uh, people. That's pretty insane for us. And a special shout out to our friends over there uh, on the subreddit. Uh, I know they, they've recently joined and everything, but they are now at 100,000 people in the subreddit. Pretty impressive, dude. It shows you know the size or the scale of New World and how much hype is behind it uh, to have a, yeah. a subreddit of 100,000 people. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. The amount of people that have played this open beta has kind of uh, blew my expectations out of the water. I didn't think that many people would play the open beta. So yeah, a big congratulations to them. Sorry, I got off topic a little bit there, but a big congratulations to them for the 100K. That's awesome, man. It's really cool. It's a vibrant to growing Reddit over there. It's dope. Yes, for sure. All right, man. Well, let's get into uh, the uh, the news that we have this week. You know, this is very challenging. I don't have the audio. <laughs> I don't have the audio playing through my ears, so I just have to guess when the drops are over. But, you know, it, it, whatever. Okay, so basically, uh, the open beta came out. Surprise. If you're following New World, you probably knew that. But but uh, there's some big things that we want to talk about with the open beta. Obviously, this was a surprise, Bordy, because, uh, you know, personally, I didn't think there was going to be an open beta. They had even mentioned that there probably wasn't going to be one. But due to the massive success to the closed beta and i think a lot of the changes that they needed to be made required some sort of like mass chest or mass testing because of like you know the nature of some of the bugs that were happening in closed beta they went ahead and opened it up for open beta and dude uh what's your what's your overall opinion of of this uh you know random but cool short test that they put out here uh 
uh, this month. Yeah, I mean, I think the reasoning behind the open beta was was just that they, they needed to test some things and test server stability and all of that jazz and maybe a little nod to the players too to let us in there since they delayed a little bit. I think that might yeah. have had a little bit to do with it as well. But but overall, just to test things as a beta, as you would expect from a beta. But in terms of like the overall gameplay, I honestly read I haven't got to play a ton of the open beta. Yeah. I have played some. I have I have played well. I, I've played several hours of the open beta. I just haven't no lifed it. Uh, but but from what I have been in there seeing, I have watched some other streamers. I have been obviously a part of the open beta. We're heavily invested in New World, obviously. So we jumped in there. But it, I think it's fine, man. It's been good. There has been some performance issues that I that I ran into. There's been some bugs. Like there's a weird audio bug that happens. There's uh, a little bit of a stamina bug that happens. And I think that one was in, in closed beta as well, potentially. Um, so there are some things they still need to work out. But I think they'll get them sorted out. And that's what the open beta is for, right? So they can figure out those things and, and knock those out overall i had a great time man the, the the time that i played the several hours that i played i jumped in immediately flagged for pvp as soon as i got to that point ran around and pvp'd with the boys and the girls from uh from the revenant and it was dude we had a blast man it's so much fun i love it and, and overall felt good man i mean a lot of the changes that they made I think we'll talk about those here in a little bit, but overall it still felt similar. The game felt very similar. There are some big differences that were in the patch notes, but the game still played and felt very similar to the closed beta. I had a good time. Yeah, I, dude, I think anytime we get to play New World is a good time. Uh, you mentioned a lot of the changes. We're going to go over the big ports here. We, we did put out a video of covering all the patch notes on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't looked at the patch notes and don't want to read them, we did put out a video uh, covering most of the changes, and there and there's some big ones here, Bordy. So let's hop right in. Uh, first and foremost, dude, healing. Healing was a major mm -hmm. problem in the uh, the closed beta, mainly in PvP. It was just overskilled, overtuned. You could basically uh, technically survive forever with heavy armor on, especially like in a one v one situation. Uh, a lot of people felt like the life staff needed some attention, and it got it, Bordy. Uh, there's a lot of changes to the healing. Uh, there was a 20% overall nerf. To healing output of course if you factor in the uh the buffs to you know and and some people weren't familiar about this but the scale the the uh equip load bonuses for light and medium did not scale with healing it was only damage so you only got 20 percent more damage and 10 percent more damage for medium and so now that that percentage it applies to healing as well so technically if you're wearing light armor healing was the same strength as it was in the closed beta for the most part, but uh, you obviously as you as you go up to heavy armor, you, the, your uh, overall effectiveness as a healer uh, declines. So, what do you think about the, these changes, Bordy, uh, to the healing and the life staff in particular? I think they're fine. I think they're headed in the right direction without a doubt. Having that really tanky healer is a problem, man. You can't have that. The, the healer was absolutely unkillable whenever you had heavy armor on and you were just stacking those really powerful heals on yourself, and that's what people were running around with during the closed beta. It's not near as severe as it was like back during the preview event whenever everyone was running around with a life staff, just zooming around all, all over the place. If you guys remember back that far with the dash, um, but it was, <laughs> yeah. it was an issue and it was kind of one of those things that just cropped up as the meta to run. And it, and it wasn't a very good meta, right? Like it just wasn't a good thing to just be almost unkillable sitting out there. If, if somebody knew what they were doing with the life staff, you, you could not kill them in heavy armor with the life staff. So now with light armor, you should in theory, be able to kill them. I admittedly, I, I did not fight anyone in the open world running any sort of any sort of life staff build. And that may be because of the patch notes. And like I said, I only really played one night for several hours. I played a couple of hours uh, outside of that as well, but it was more just kind of running around doing some PVE, running around the world, just kind of hanging out uh, really with my son. My son was playing with me too. And so we didn't really do a lot of PVP during that stretch, but the night that we were just doing nothing but PVP, we didn't really run into anyone running running life staff definitely didn't run into anyone running the heavy heavy armor life staff build and i'm sure that's primarily because of the patch notes that were released so i don't have any experience pvping against somebody out in the open world running the life staff really we had we had uh, someone in our group running life staff but he was in light armor he was in light armor running around healing us and he was just staying in the back lines and it was it was quite effective i mean we were we were uh, doing pretty well in the open world so i don't know i think overall on paper the changes 
are good, right? Like I think they're headed in the right direction. If they need tuned or whatever, which they probably will, I'm sure they'll make some changes between now and launch. They'll figure all that out as, as MMOs do, they change things all the time. So I don't know if it's spot on yet. I don't know if it's perfectly correct yet, but I do think it's headed in the right direction. Well, and they're obviously, you know, and I think we're going to talk a lot about this later on, but I think it's kind of naive to think that they're going to get the meta like or the balance 100% uh, right on launch. I think they, yeah. they identify the big things that I, I kind of know here is they identified the problem. They identified that the life staff was overtuned and they adjusted it. They figured out a way to adjust it that yeah. made sense. Um, and, and, uh, you know, obviously there's now healers, if you're going to be like put out effective healing for your group, you're also going to be a little bit squishy. And I think that's good. I, I think you need some trade-offs there potentially, uh, to, uh, you know, to, uh, be a healer. But I, I do think there is a world that you probably still can heal in heavy armor and still be pretty effective. Uh, so, yeah. you know, as, as you know, there's only three days, obviously, you know, it's hard to even say there was a metaphor because I think, you know, there was a ton of changes here, uh, in these, uh, open beta notes that, that changed a lot. And we'll talk about how armor works and everything like that. So, you know, as, as we get into launch and, and get it some more time to test these things, I think, you know, we'll figure out truly if the life staff still a problem or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to take some time for sure. Without a doubt, yeah. Uh, so the next topic, uh, why don't we just go ahead and talk about armor? I sh uh, so armor uh, was completely reworked. Um, they the the equip load weights or the minimum weights uh, of each uh, or maximum weight of each equip load was uh, drastically adjusted. Uh, how armor works in general uh, was uh, drastically adjusted. Uh, you know, and so Bordy. You know, it's interesting, dude, because, well, not only did I spend 20 hours writing a guide about how armor worked and now it's completely obsolete, <laughs> but the thing is, is, uh, you know, it's interesting because now it makes more sense. Like, you know, and we talked a lot about this before. And like I said, I was doing a pretty extensive uh, article on it and, and you kind of notice the flaws in the old system where you could basically, you know, get to the ma the almost max amount of resistance that you could obtain from armor just by uh, the medium load. So like you're basically like percent like a percent or two away uh, from from gaining re the resistance of a tank just by equipping four heavy and then making one of like your gloves or boots light or medium, excuse me. And yeah. and so you know the the new system obviously it was intended to fix that exact problem. Uh, so they, they, the new equip load, I believe for light, you have to stay at 12.9 and, and then on, on uh, medium, you have to be 22.9 to, to be in the medium. So, so drastic changes there, Bordy. Uh, and then also, uh, they, they changed that it used to be where if you had a piece of armor that, that was slanted in one direction or another, meaning if it had more physical armor than elemental armor or more elemental armor than physical armor, that armor weighed a little bit different than the rest. Uh, so that's no longer in the game anymore. Now all armor across every uh, weight class, so uh, so like a heavy chest weighs, like, weighs the same as every other heavy chest in the game. You're just basically choosing what resistance you want to kind of lean towards there the balance between the two resistances was a little bit off before and now it seems to be balanced as well and then the last thing that they did is change the overall equip weight from each piece of armor so chests now weigh a lot more but they also provide for you with most of your resistance uh also your helmet now weighs the same as your glove and boots so those are the lightest they're all tied for the lightest piece of armor and then leg wears somewhere in between your chest and and your gloves. So, Bordy, you know, interesting changes here. Again, these make a ton of sense, and I think they're, overall they're heading in a good direction here uh, with the armor changes. Yeah, I think so, man. Because as you know, to be fair, during your during your time writing that guide or going and digging into the armor, you learned a whole lot about the system, and you made mention to me at one point in time that they were going to have to adjust some things, and that you fully expected for that to be the case. So you knew some of these things were coming. I don't know if you knew they were coming quite so soon during the open beta, but you knew they were coming, and uh, it, they needed to happen, right? Like they absolutely need to happen. The system was a little bit weird with the way armor worked and the way the armor weights work. Now it's a little cleaner for sure. It's easier to. Determine 
determine what what to equip and when. Now you know all the time what weight your your heavy chest is going to be. It's just a little easier to plan out. And also the way that they adjusted the weights, man, makes a lot more sense now. Because before, putting on four pieces of heavy and one piece of light and still gaining very, very close to the same mitigations as if you pushed all the way into heavy just wasn't very good. Because you still got the bonuses. You could do a ton of damage and be incredibly tanky. And it just made those like great axe and warhammer builds mm -hmm. just crazy strong because these people were just you know putting points into constitution and then putting 300 into strength and then running around also doing the 10 percent extra damage with the with the medium armor but getting the same mitigation as heavy armor and it was just like those builds were really 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 strong i think they're still going to be pretty strong but it just makes a lot more <clears throat> sense this way i think so i was happy to see those changes yeah 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 the four four heavy one medium it was the meta it was pretty undeniable i think in total if you wear balance armor and this was again back where armor you could get you know shift away your uh, you know your difference between your physical el elemental resistance with some equip weight uh, differences but Overall, like with balanced armor, I think you got about like 17 or 18 percent more mitigation. Uh, and you still got you you still got to keep the 10 percent down damage bonus. You got a little buff to CC duration. And so like if on paper, if you're if you're simulating that, then obviously the person, you know, the person weighing medium far out, uh, you know, out uh, lasted the person in light armor that got the 20 percent damage bonus, but was still like you know, significantly taking a hit in the mitigation factor. So again, this, hopefully I haven't done a lot of testing. I'll, I'll be doing that between now and launch, but uh, overall, I think the new armor system makes a ton more sense uh, than it did before. And you see a lot more people nowadays running around with light armor, which is what you want to see, right? You know, you definitely want to see, uh, you know, that make it a decision for the players to decide what weight they want to run out, run around at. Yeah, absolutely. There should be a trade-off. Just like with the healing thing, there should totally be a trade-off that if you want to run heavy armor where your heals aren't going to be as effective or you shouldn't do as much damage or whatever, which is what they were shooting for initially whenever they made these changes to the armor system by adding in the percentages because before it was completely different before they did the first huge rework to armor. There weren't like these 20% increases to damage and 10% and increases to damage and so forth. And I, so they were shooting for what they have now. They were shooting in that direction. I, I, I would suspect that we'll probably still get some tweaks and some balance changes yeah, to armor sure. as we move forward. Maybe even before launch or at launch, I would assume that we'll get another big patch that's going to obviously fix a bunch of bugs that they found during open beta, yeah. but, but I would fully expect them to kind of come in and tweak some of these other things and maybe not armor specifically. Maybe they were happy with where that landed in open beta. I don't know, but I, I would imagine at some point down the road, we'll see something else come in uh, for armor until they get it where they want it. Right, for sure. Uh, obviously, you know, I think they are able to... They, it's been open long enough for them to get enough data to probably fix a lot of the bugs uh, that they mm -hmm. have before launch. But also, you know, the, they, they might not hesitate to tweak a few things as well. I know the fire staff has a bug right now that causes this to do an insane amount of damage. So obviously, that'll be one thing that, that will get brought back. I don't even think that's an intentional buff. I, obviously, that's just something that needs to be addressed, like, bug-wise. So, uh, But yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I don't doubt that they're going to tweak some stuff between now and then as well. Uh, so, uh, now here's one of the things that I really uh, was excited to see is their acknowledgement on the difficulty of PVE and the overall mm -hmm. increase of difficulty, uh, in that category. So they've increased the, the amount of damage that, uh, you know, open world bosses can deal or elite mobs can deal, uh, the amount of damage that the mobs deal across the board, a lot of good changes here. And again, you know, uh, I think new world's combat in both PVE and PVP is supposed to be high skill. Uh, you know, uh, challenging combat with the action combat and learning when to block and dodge roll and everything like that. Uh, so, dude, it, it was great to see that they made some adjustments in the PvP cat, the PVE category. So, what do you think about these changes, Bordy, uh, to the damage dealt and PVE? Yeah, I like these as well. It should be more difficult. And the way they did it is they didn't start off like whenever you're level one and on the beach, they didn't increase the difficulty there. They waited until later on in the game to start yeah, increasing yeah. the difficulty, which I think was the correct move, right? And especially once you get the end game, some of those end game mobs should be hard. It should give you something to do at end game to go farm those things. It shouldn't just be a breeze. And the way that this game is set up, you're right. It is kind of geared more towards high skill based, high difficulty gameplay. And, and I like it. I like to see that they're, that they're working on that and increasing in the difficulty of the mobs because before in cl in closed beta they were probably a little bit weak and and even before that in the alphas and all the other times we have seen and and, and had to play the game during the preview etc 
the mobs did need some love, man. And I think they may still need some moving forward, just like we've said on every other topic here. They're going to continue to tweak these things until they get them right. But I do like the direction they're headed. And, and all of these changes, really, that they've made so far that we have discussed up to this point, I think they're headed in a really good direction. This is no exception. I like this a lot. Yeah, for sure. All right. So the last one, and this is a hot button topic, I think. Yeah. We, we discussed this a little bit uh, before. Uh, PVP scaling. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar with how it worked in closed beta, it was basically, uh, you know, the most advantage you would get, for, or mostly the advantage you would get from being a higher level was the access to, obviously, the perks, the perks from your attribute uh, thresholds. And then, obviously, as you progress through the mastery skill tree of your weapons, you have access to more passives and, and more active abilities for the most part. And I think most people would agree uh, there. It was pretty balanced uh, overall. I think, you know, from a lower level standpoint, you had, you, you had an opportunity uh, to best a higher level player in PVP. And, and it happened like I, you know, me and you did a lot of open world PVP. We beat people that were 10, 20, 30 people, you know, 30 levels higher than us. And, and sometimes they beat us and, and, you know, we got beat by people uh, our same level. Like it, it felt like we always had a chance. Right. And that, that was one mm -hmm. of the big things. Uh, so now there's been a lot of, uh, comments or, or commentary around the PVP scaling now, cause it is, it is scaled towards to be more like a traditional MMO, which means the higher level you are, the more damage you can deal and the less damage you'll take from like lower level sources. So Bordy overall, what do you think about the PVP scaling now versus in the closed beta? Oh boy, that is a tricky one, man. It is very tricky and it's such a hot button, touchy subject whenever you talk about PVP scaling. So I don't know the differences between, I mean, I know the differences between closed beta and open beta, but it's a, it's such a touchy subject, man. And I will tell you, I will tell you where I stand on this, on this subject before I get any deeper. I personally like pvp scaling to an extent right like the whole the whole premise behind new world is that you want to flag up and go fight in the open world the, the whole game revolves heavily around territory control and undermining a territory to gain influence so that you can go to war and win that territory the whole game revolves around that that is what the core of the game is it is a territory control game that's that's really what it is yes there's a lot of crafting and gathering and all that stuff is amazing there's a lot of pve there's a lot of other things you can do but at its core you're supposed to be fighting over territory that's what you do so in order to encourage that pvp scaling is something that i think kind of needs to be there because if it's not man if it's not then you're going to have new players coming into the game that just refuse to flag until they reach level 60 and then for people like us red like if we came into the game late and i really i love the pvp i would want to flag up initially as soon as i have that opportunity i would be very upset if every time I walked out into the open world, I just got wrecked because there was somebody that was level, you know, 10 levels higher than me that just killed me. And I felt like I had absolutely no shot at all in killing them right now. There is a fine line there too. If I'm level 15 and I walk out of town and there's a level 60 standing there, I should be a little concerned and I shouldn't feel like I can go take on that guy. I don't think, I, I think that the, that the level gap, there should be some sort of, some sort of cutoff there that makes it really, really difficult. But I also think you should feel like you have a chance no matter what, even though if it's a very, 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 very tiny chance, you should feel like you have a chance to encourage people to flag up for PVP to go undermine these territories because at the end of the day, it's what you're doing in New World. Now, it is very, very touchy and very tricky because I can also see the flip side of that whenever you're level 60, if you're getting smashed by a level 20 because of the PVP scaling, that can be frustrating too for the high, higher level players. But, but I do think it needs to be in the game to an extent. I think it's, I think it will be, I think it'll be here to stay. Now, I, whenever we were fighting in the open beta, we were fighting a lot of people that were very close to our levels. Well, I don't think I ever fought anybody that was more than 10 levels over me um, whenever I was running around solo. And I, I still felt like I had a chance. I was level 12. I fought a level 24 guy and I killed the level 24 guy. Now that may have been because he was an inexperienced. He may not have ever played the game before open beta or whatever, but I still killed him. And I felt like I still had a chance. So I don't think it was, it was horrible. I, I still felt like I had a chance during the open beta. So I don't know the exact numbers behind PVP scaling, but it is something that they're going to have to get correct. I think for this game to be really successful long-term. Yeah, it's it's tough because I think that both both options or I think there is both correct like 
aspects of uh, of the closed beta version and the open beta version. I think you should be able to punch up a little bit in level if you're skilled. You should, you know, versing someone of lesser skill. I think you should have a fighter's chance against higher level people. But how much higher than you? I don't know. I think yeah, it, it does become it does become touchy if like mm -hmm. here's a level twenty and you can outplay like a level sixty. It's just kind of like. I don't know that that kind of goes across or that goes against like most MMO like, uh, you know, um, principle because of the idea of leveling up and getting stronger. Right. You want to feel like as you mm -hmm. level up, you're more powerful. And then if that happens in PVE, but then in PVP, I'm like, you know, you're in a level 20 zone. You're like one shotting mobs. And all of a sudden this level 20 dude comes up and, and, and wrecks your face. It's kind of like yeah. uh, there's question marks start to come up. But you know the thing about it is, uh, Bordy is it's uh, one of the things, and I've said this a lot. One of the, I think, most important or or uh, best features that's ever been um, ever been introduced into an MMO was one Tamriel in ESO, and the reason that was is because, and it has nothing to do with open world PvP because that it didn't change open world PvP at all. Uh, but the scaling in in the in the overall game allowed you to play with anybody at any time, so it made it viable for a level sixty to run around or level fifty to run around with, uh, you know, their new friend that just bought the game or just got the game for Christmas, and you can both still get experience and still kill mobs and still have a relatively difficult difficult time doing that. Right? It, it felt like it wasn't like you're going around smacking around level one mobs. You were always fighting at things your level. I think there's some value to be had there as well. It's like, okay, well, in, in the open world PvP, you know, if you flag up, you're going to get good fights. You're always going to have a fair chance. You're always going to, you know, uh, get the opportunity to to engage in combat. You're not going to like, you know, you it, at some point it'll it won't make sense for new players to flag up, right? Because most people yeah. will be level sixty. And then, you know, those people will be running around at level 10, learning the game, maybe wanting to get that extra 5% experience to catch up with their friends. And then, and then level 60 is just coming and one shot them. I think there'll be a problem then too, but who, overall, you know, I, I think uh, there, there are good aspects of both versions of the scaling and, and, uh, we'll see where they land at launch, man. Cause I know that there's been, uh, definitely a lot of, uh, discussion around the PVP scaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that that's the point I was making for sure is that for new players, the barrier to entry there becomes very tricky if you don't have PvP scaling in the game because at its core, like I said before, it is a territory control game. And so people are going to want to flag up. That's kind of one of the big draws yeah. to this game is the PvP. There's a lot of other draws to the game, but PvP is a big draw to the game. And if you can't, if you can't go compete fairly early on because there's no other way to compete, man. You don't have, you don't have arenas that you can go fight in outpost rush is locked at level 60 you have to be level 60 so really the only viable pvp you're going to have is open world pvp because if you're a new player coming in three months down the road and there's a siege people aren't going to pick you to play in the siege because you're level 20 in there and everybody else in the siege is level 60 they're not going to want you right. to play in there so so the only other viable option is going to be open world pvp and there's got to be some kind of balance there. There has to be, or else the new players that come in are just going to leave. It's it's not going to be a long term sustainable solution to just smash every time you walk out in the other world and and you just feel like you're getting one shot at every turn. People are going to get frustrated. They're going to quit, and that's that's what would happen. And we don't want to see that happen at all. We want to see New World be a, a healthy game for a very very long time for sure. Yes. You talked about PV, PVE scaling a little bit. I don't think that'll ever make its way into New World, man. And I don't know, I don't know that I would want it in this game particularly I, I kind of enjoy the new world is open world still you can still walk around from zone to zone without any restrictions whatsoever you just may walk into a zone and get worked but the way they have the mobs and all that system set up right now and the way you gain experience and the skulls on the mobs and the way they leash and everything with their higher levels i think that's the system they intend to have i i don't know that we'll ever have anything any pve scaling which I'm I'm pretty okay with that actually. Yeah, and and I'm not saying like it has to happen or that it needs to happen. I'm just saying like for the aspect of solving the new problem, the the new player problem, like as yeah. you come out with new content, it, it brought in a new element that no other MMO has done before, which is basically like okay, if you buy the new expansion and your friend has been playing for ten years and he owns a new expansion, yeah. then you guys can play the new expansion together, whether you're level one or he's level fifty. I just think that brought mm -hmm. a, a very cool aspect to, you know, the game and it made all the content viable because literally 
no matter where you go at that point, maybe you had missed an expansion or something, but you got the max level, you can go back there and experience it at max level and get the opportunity to, you know, go through the content and everything like that. So I just think, you know, from a reusable standpoint and from a, like a new yeah. player standpoint, I thought it was a really good uh, feature. Not, not to say that new world needs it or anything, but, uh, well, you know, I think it, it, time will tell, uh, how new world is going to deal with the new player problem. Like, cause I think the first, the first, uh, expansion that comes out, they'll have to figure out, you know, what their solution is going to be, uh, for that. Mm -hmm. But, but for now, obviously we're just waiting for launch. So we're not going to have that problem for, yeah. for a hot minute. Cross, cross that bridge when we get there. Yes, I exa guess. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Bordy. Yeah. So I thought it'd be fun here. Uh, you know, as, as open beta winds up, uh, as, as someone pointed out, it, it's only got three hours left as we're, as we're recording this podcast. Ooh. So while you're, Boy. when you listen to this, uh, there will be no more open beta. So we, we, here are the common questions going around in the new world community, specifically on Reddit. That basically, you know, I think people are questioning uh, before launch, uh, you know, and uh, and I thought it'd be, you know, good to kind of or fun to go through this on the podcast. So this is going to be our main topic uh, for tonight. And that's just going to be a common question surrounding New World. All right, Bordy. So the first one we have is, is the game ready for launch? I can't believe how often this comes up. And it's like people don't want it to come out. It's like people is like, you know, uh, we need to, you know, we we need to delay the game again for, you know, for now it would be the, the fifth time. And, and I'm here, and again, I'm here as obviously a little bit of bias because we've been creating content around the, the game for so long. Yes, the game is ready, Bordy. Yo, uh, we can't. It's impossible to put out a game without bugs, without you know some problems, without some difficulty, missing some features. Like the the game is not gonna be like, wow, ten years later where everything is in the game, and you know what I mean. Like we're we're launching. We say this a lot. We're we're launching a game that's brand new. They're trying a lot of new awesome things in the MMO space. There's gonna be some hiccups here and there, but just because there's one bug, Bordy. Where you know your guy's pants fall off, or you are invisible for you know some of your playtime, it doesn't mean the game needs to be delayed. It just means there's bugs in the game, which are there bugs in literally every game uh, that we play. So, Bordy, I'll let you answer the question, even though I just did. Is the game ready for launch? Yes, the game is ready for launch, man. <laughs> The, the game is ready for launch. All the points you made are valid. There's bugs in the game for sure. The, it is it is laggy, but I think that's because there's they're stress testing the servers. I think they'll get all of that stuff worked out. Now, if it comes to launch and the servers are performing awful, uh, then I think some people are going to have some other questions, and I hope that that doesn't happen. But what MMO have you ever seen that had a smooth launch? Because I can't remember one. It's zero. The, an, the answer is zero. Launch. And and so, and again, like I've played games that the servers literally crash for hours upon yeah. hours. You know, yeah. and and and, and yeah. these servers, I've never like even during the obviously there was a queue, but during the closed beta, I never like had like a problem where I couldn't like play the game for a long period of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every MMO I've ever played has had a pretty rough launch, and and it's just about scale, right? If you have millions of people logging into your game client for the first time, like there's going obviously it's gonna bring attention or bring to light some problems. You know what I mean? That yeah. that necessarily you could not figure out with a closed client. So, I mean, like, again, well, here's the I think here's a bigger underlying issue, man. Right. Like if they delayed, how detrimental would that be to the game versus if they released with uh, with it not being 100 percent polished? First of all, number one, you're right. It will never be 100 percent polished. No matter what you do, there's going to be bugs in the game. Whenever you push a new update, yeah. there's going to be bugs. I mean, every MMO out right now still has bugs in the game. As long as it's not a game breaking, crazy bug that people are just exploiting over and over and over, then <laughs> then it's fine, right? Like, and if people are exploiting something and abusing bugs and finding something, they've already said they're going to address those issues and they're going to roll people back. Right. So if someone's exploiting a bug that is in the game and it is an exploitable thing, they are going to take that person and they're going to roll them back. They've already said that. They're going to be very strict on those on those uh, regard. They mentioned that during the closed beta, whenever everyone was was using the town the town project boards. And I'm not going to call them people uh, say that they were exploiting it because it was a beta, and you know you do those things in the beta. But and if it was in launch and people were doing that, they're going to roll those people back. 
And, and it, that's a solution and that's what they're going to have to do. And I think that that'll happen whenever it launches. Unfortunately, it's just part of it, just part of it, man. I, I but the, the bigger underlying issue though, is what is it going to do to the game? If they don't launch in September on September 28th, what is that going to do to the hype? What is that going to do to the game overall and the interest in the game and the negative publicity that the game's going to have versus if they just launched with, with a few imperfections in the game? Well, yeah, and I think that it's very, like, to me, an easy conversation because it's like there's going to be imperfections. Even if they delay the game a month or two or another year, they're still going to have problems, like some bugs they need to work out at launch. Like, you know what I mean? That's going to happen no matter what. I've never, there's never, I think in the history of games, ever been a game that comes out without some bug, like without some sort of, you know, a UI breaking thing or, you know. The main thing with with an MMO that's different about uh, you know those particular other games is the fact that you're you know you you're in competition with people as far as like leveling and and you know and PvP getting an advantage in PVE economy wise getting rich off of some exploit you know where you can have millions of gold and then eventually they fix the exploit and no one else gets that opportunity to make all that gold. There are problems like that in MMOs. I remember in ESO. Uh, I, you know, I was in uh, like a high-end raiding guild, and we had people there that had duped uh, millions of dollars worth of items, and they were rich, like infinitely rich in the game. They never got caught, yeah. and but it was there. You know what I mean? Like it, they did it, and, and the game still. Uh, last time I checked, has a lot of people playing it. So it's like, you know, there's gonna be things like that in the game that happen, and and like you said, they've already took a firm stance on that. They're going to roll if if they if people are using exploits and they're caught, they'll be rolled back, and yeah. and uh, you know you take that risk if you're going to waste your time using an exploit to level and then they roll you back like that's kind of what you get, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think they've got to launch, man. If they don't launch on the 28th, I personally think it's going to be detrimental to the hype of the game. I think a lot of people are going to be very off put by it. I do think even if they did delay, it'd still be popular as soon as they released. But I just I don't think. I don't think they can do that, man. I think they need to release on the 28th and then roll with it and then fix things as they come up. That's that's what an MMO does. You can patch it, you can fix it. It's it's all the time a an ever growing thing. I I you know it's 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 been in development a long time. It'd be one thing if they if they had only delayed once. They've delayed a bunch of times so far. I, I'm just afraid of what it would do to the to the hype and the negative connotation you'd have around it if they didn't release. Well, and, and again, like, what is the reason for the delay at this point? Because it can't be like there's some bugs. Because you know what I mean? It's just that all games have bugs. It, it's just it is what it is. Exploits will be found. Like you know what I mean? If you have a million people in the game using things, they're going to find something that they can take advantage of. You know, and yeah. and uh, it's just it is what it is that you will never. I don't think get a a perfect, especially the scale of New World. I don't think you're going to get it to be 100 percent no bugs, no exploits at launch. But but I think the game is in a pretty decent state right now. Yeah. And obviously they have another two weeks to polish things. And I think you know, like you said, I think it's time. I think it's uh, you know, it's ready to launch. You know. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, uh, the next one, uh, and this is an interesting one. We'll skip down here. One topic is mounts, dude. Uh, there's a lot of solutions for mounts. Like, you know, some people have mentioned like unequipped weapon or, you know, uh, sheathed weapon on roadways can run faster. Uh, you know, overall mounts in the game. What, you know, what is your, uh, view or opinion on mounts in new world? Oh boy. That's something we've talked about at nauseum here before. And right now I don't think the game needs them. I think at some point they'll add them. I I think it's just going to be so highly requested. They'll add them because I also think, and people are going to tilt at me for saying this, but it's true. It's a great source of income for the game, man. You can sell mounts in the cash shop, mount skins in the cash shop. And and I think that's fine. I would buy them. Like who cares a freaking mount skin and they're going to make money doing that. And I think it's a great source of revenue. I just right now, now, I don't think they need to incorporate them into the game, and I don't think they will. I have heard Scott Lane say before that they, if they, if they ever put mounts into the game, it would be at a time where they made sense and at a time where they fleshed out their their mount system yeah. to be something good and unique, which is what I would want to see, right? Like I don't want to see these ethereal mounts like an ESO that I can just summon up, hop on my mount and run off. That doesn't fit the theme of new world. And and my biggest fear right now is it would absolutely kill open world PVP, which is again 
what the game is about, man. It's about undermining territory, running around, killing people and doing PVP missions so you can undermine the territory and take over a territory. That's what it is about, man. So if you incorporate mounts, you're going to have these hordes of people running, doing their mission, jumping back on the mount, running back to town. You'll never be able to kill them if that's the case. So they're going to have to be very careful about how they implement mounts. They're going to have to put them in in a way that makes sense. And we've talked about some ideas before on other on other podcasts. I don't want to get too deep into this topic because we can sit here and talk about yeah, it for yeah. hours. But but right now, I don't think the game needs mounts. I don't want them in the game on launch. And uh, I think it's fine without them. At some point, we'll get them. At yeah. some point. It might be two years from now, but the game will have mounts at some point. I, I have no doubt. Well, and that, you know, I saw there was a good point. I it Potentially, it was made by someone on the team. Is like, well, like, if, if it gets to the point where traveling becomes, like, a tedious task to where, like, you know, it no longer, like, is fun to, like, explore the world yeah. of Eternum or, like, it becomes, like, this inconvenient thing, then, of course, they're going to add mounts. You know, mounts mm -hmm. will eventually come to the game. I don't doubt that. Do we need mounts now? No. Are we going to get mounts now? No. <laughs> so, I, I, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just not going to happen. It's a, it's a great conversation piece, but I think it's a ways down the road. Maybe when the map, like, gets to you know, double its size or something like that, then I could see them at that point, you know, again, finding a good system to add, add mounts. I think a ton of people like, like, uh, animal husbandry, you know, breeding of mounts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think they could, you know, if they take the time, like they did with fishing, right? Fishing yeah. is like one of the, like, honestly, one of the best fishing systems I've ever played in any MMO. Um, and, and they did a great job. They took their time and they did it right. If they just do the same thing with mounts and, and they have a cool system that allows, you know, potentially like you to, to farm mounts and breed mounts and everything like that, mm -hmm. uh, I think it could be really fun to have mounts in New World. But I just don't yeah, think that time is now. Yeah, tie it into the life skills system somehow and make right. them make sense. But there's a lot of things that they're going to have to think out and flesh out and think through because mounts could could be very bad for the game if implemented poorly. Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, so here we go, dude. Uh, the next one is, should there be a timer on an like animal skinning? So this is the, this is one of the things, uh, that I think is an interesting topic because yeah. right now, if you kill an animal, someone can just like, can, someone can basically just like <laughs> follow yeah. you around and let you kill mobs and then they can just skin it right before you get a chance to get to, to do it. Uh, so what do you think about that? That particular system in the game? Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it either because people can run around unflagged and just steal your stuff. I, I see that. I <laughs> I don't know, man. I wouldn't be op opposed to it, I guess. It, it, it is what it is. I don't mind it at all. If I'm killing something and somebody comes and steals my steals my kill or, or starts skinning it, it is what it is. And I, I haven't had that big of an issue with it, to be <laughs> honest. Like if I kill something and I want to skin it, I kill it and then immediately skin it. And I haven't had that big of an issue. There has been times where I've killed a bunch of animals in one pack. And then somebody came over there and started skinning one. It's like, dude, whatever, man. I, I never really, I haven't thought it was a huge deal, but I can see how a lot of people who are very heavily invested into crafting and gathering could see it as a big deal. So I think implementing a 30 second ish timer, would be fine. Uh, that would give somebody time to kill another mob, come back, skin their, their first one they killed and then go skin the other one. Yeah, it is what it is. If it were a full on, pvp game where there were no flagging i would say absolutely not because if somebody's coming to take your your skins and you get mad at them then just freaking kill them right like that's what you do but in this situation you can't do that there's literally nothing you can do so adding a timer i think is fine right and, and you know the, all loot is individual in the game right so it's like mm -hmm. you know the only the thing that would make sense is like if you yeah, if you Maybe yeah. you get the killing blow on a on a mob, then you get like the window to to loot it or skin it or whatever. But yeah, and then uh, people are just gonna come last hit your mobs that you're hitting and then skin. That's gonna kill people too. They have to be based. Uh, on at least takes a little bit more effort than just like running yeah. up and skinning yeah. it without. You. Yeah, something. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I just thought that was an interesting topic uh, there. So the yeah. next the next there one you. is. Uh, the respawn stuck button on launch. So, you know, we've mm -hmm. known that this has been a problem as far as like uh, some like, uh, I guess like gameplay style. So basically like, you know, you just suicide. Like you get a quest done, you suicide back to the the settlement or the town or wherever you to hand it in. Uh, there's people in PvP that will, you know, I guess suicide right before you kill them to where you don't get the XP. From them, so it's like you know, uh, what do you expect from this respawn stuck button uh, on launch? 
It's not there in open beta, man. They took it out. So right now in open beta, it is recall to in. So the only thing that's in there right now in the open beta, you have, it's not a respawn button. It is recall to in. They changed yeah. it. And then you have a slash unstuck. The slash unstuck is necessary. You have to have it unstuck, but the unstuck button doesn't send you back to a settlement. The unstuck button just sends you uh, like close Closer, to where you were. Yeah. And, and there's still bugs in the game where you get stuck in rocks and stuff. Whenever we were running around in the open beta, I got stuck in a couple of rocks and I had to use the unstuck button. The respawn button is no longer a thing. They, you go, you go to the end and I think that's, that's fine. They took it out. It's, it's, it's out. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think that, you know, a short answer is, yeah, you, to, to make, to allow that to be in the game, which is like, you know, something that they need, which is the unstuck button. There just needs to be like a, like a, uh uh a timer thing where like it takes you a while to summon like you know like it does to fast travel like you have to sit there and channel the a's author whatever you're doing when you like kneel down and raise your hand it, it creates a vulnerable opportunity just in case people are using it for an advantage or whatever but overall i do think yeah i think the newer system is is the right call and and that was you know i think mainly for testing right to be able to kill yourself on whim just in case you got into some bad situations so but people, yep. yeah, people like got, got upset that it was removed and it's, uh, I think nonsense, but all right, Bordy. It shouldn't be in the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's not something that should be Exactly. Yeah. So here we go, uh, with the next one, Bordy, and that is swimming. <laughs> We're all pirates. Oh, We're all pirates. We're all sailors. And we all <laughs> apparently have no idea how to swim. Oh man. So, so Bordy, <laughs> what is your thought on, on swimming? Uh, being add it to the game, dude. Add it to the game. Walking underwater is dumb, dude. It's dumb. Well, Add it's it kinda, to the game yeah, yeah. and, and incorporate it in a way like they said that, well, if you walk into water and heavy armor, you can't swim in heavy armor anyway. OK, I get that. So add it to the game so that if you're in light armor, you can swim, but it drains it drains your stamina less. And if you're in heavy armor, you swim and it drains your stamina more or something. I don't know, man. Swimming is not I don't know why swimming would be an issue anyway. Like if you're running and both of you can swim, just swim across. I understand the realism aspect. If you're in heavy armor, you don't want to. But. To me, it's like, man, I, I don't know, dude. I, 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 I just, I would like to see it in the game personally. It, it, it's, it's kind of goofy to walk through the water and you're like, you're like, <laughs> like the river under, that's you're, your... like, yeah, you're just like walking under the water. And then, and then as soon as your breath goes out, you die. There's no like timer that doesn't tick your health down. You don't have any time to get back out of the water. You die. You're, you're instantly dead. And it's like, well, yeah. crap, dude. I, so I don't, I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's not a huge deal. Like it's not a grand game breaking thing for me. It doesn't tilt me off the face of the planet whenever I, I can't do it. I just run around the water. And, yeah. and I think that's kind of intended. I think, I think they want you to run yeah, around I think the water versus through the water because there's certain paths to go from territory to territory that you can see on the map that's shallow water that they lead you through right so you're not intended to go through the water so that's by design but I, it's just goofy to me to to go under i don't know yeah i, I think it, it is what it is i yeah. think i think the main intention of water is just for barrier you, just to prevent you yeah. from going to places yeah, you don't want so. you're not supposed to be going or like yep, cheating so. like you know going across a particular landmark that you're not supposed to be going across. Like that's the, yeah. that's the idea. I don't yeah. think it's meant to be like a, a little bit of a, you know, like games try to do underwater zones or like swimming, like it's like mm -hmm. exploring and, well, and it's not that way in new world yet. I do think eventually like there'll be an expansion that maybe potentially we get boats and, and swimming. And I think that might be maybe. great future content, but for right now, I think this system's fine. Like just, you know, don't drown. Yeah. There's the, there well, you go. I, I've never really thought about the, uh, I, I haven't put a ton of thought into the swimming thing, right? Until just now, uh, somebody in chat is talking about forcing PVP and such on bridges and choke points. That's a, a fantastic point because what if you're out there fighting in your melee, right? And you're chasing someone down and they go run into the water and start swimming across the, across the sea or across the river to the next, to the next, uh, spot or whatever. Or what if, what if you're one V one and they go and they just sit in the middle of the water and you're melee and you can't do anything about it. And then that ends the fight like that. That would be yeah, so cheesy. So maybe, so maybe that's why they don't have swimming in the game is, is because they want to force more PVP on land, which, which in that case, does make a lot of sense because if you run into the water, that's not a way to escape. So maybe that's, that's why they don't have it in. They don't want you, they don't want people escaping or, or using it as kind of a, uh, you know, a cheeky way to get out or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I think it is just mainly used for barriers or used for a way to yeah. like keep people from doing stuff like what you're talking about uh, mm -hmm. to avoid water. Uh, here's the next one. Uh, I'm glad we're solving all the, you know, all the, you know, hot button topics. <laughs> 
uh, the the uh, the uh, camps. The camps are necessary, mm -hmm. or are they still necessary, or are they a problem with the game? Now, you mentioned before the stream that you know they've obviously completely changed the way camps work. Now you have to be within what. 50 500 Five, meters 500 meters 500 yeah, meters yeah. your camp to respawn there so then that you know that's a big change from where it was before because they came people mm -hmm. were using camps as ways to you know get back and forth thing during questing and kind of use exploit that sort of quick travel between dying mm -hmm. and, and everything like that and and obviously the game isn't a survival game anymore so having like a base you know like that out in the wilderness maybe you know is something that maybe isn't even needed uh, yeah. at this point, but, but what do you think about the way camps are right now? Is it something that just kind of makes new world unique and maybe we just keep it in the game or is it something that eventually you could see being phased out? I don't know, man. We've, we've talked about this before too, whenever they made some changes to camps and, and when it, well, more specifically, whenever they added the open world PVP at the forts, we were thinking about how camps could be a big issue there. And then they adjusted that with the respawn timers yeah. and PVP for your camps. And they adjusted all of that. I could, Camps are uh, camps are an interesting topic to me, man. I could see them being removed altogether. You know, I I don't know, man. I, I honestly don't know how I feel about them. Sometimes I'm like camps are camps are nice. Sometimes I'm like camps are terrible. Like we need to pull them out of the game. But they're really they're really a big convenience whenever you're out PVEing or you're farming a spot and you have a respawn point right there beside it. That's nice to have. Uh, and there's no respawn timer whenever you're there. So mm -hmm. I don't know, man, I, the 500 meter thing, I understand why they added that because what, what you could do before is you could place a camp all the way up in the shattered mountain, and then you could just teleport back and forth to first light to the shattered mountain. If you wanted to, if you had enough A's off, like that was something you could do. And, and that just doesn't make a lot of sense that you can do that. Uh, so I understand why they changed it to 500 meters because that could be a very exploitable thing to be able to travel all the way across the map using your camp it's just kind of uh kind of uh weird i think so i i don't know man i'm on the fence dude i'm really on the fence about the whole camp situation i would personally be okay if they removed them altogether and if you were punished a little bit more if you died while you were farming and you were sent back to a settlement you had to run all the way back to your farm spot or something like that i'm, I'm totally fine with that it's not like it takes four hours to run around a new world anyway it's 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 not really that big of a of a deal uh but then on the flip side it's like well what problems do camps really cause now since they adjusted the pvp right, timers right. and all of that I, so i don't know man i don't know they're kind of cool kind of not i i don't know i'd be okay if they were just not in the game altogether to be honest yeah and there's a different there's like a kind of cool aspect of being able to like if you're getting ready to farm or do something like gather to put up your camp yeah. to where you can kind of use that as like a, you know, respawn point if something kills you or whatever. Cause you know, now one of the things uh, in new world is you, you can have gear specific to gathering. So obviously, you know, that gear may not put you in the best combat situation. If you're, you know, farming around some very powerful mobs, it's, it's a nice thought to be able to have a camp to maybe respawn at to where you don't have to run back every time that can be a little bit toxic, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, dude. Uh, overall, I think camps are definitely in a better position than they were. It was like me and you remember that time and in, in, uh, it was a preview event. We and you like had a war with people for like three hours where we were yeah, just constantly broken. respawning yeah. at the camps and, and no one can do anything about the camps. And you just keep respawning and, and no one really won because people just kept respawning with full health and all their ability. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was like it's just a very uh, yeah. it showed the problems with camps. Uh, but now I think yeah. they've adjusted some of those things and now camps aren't as bad. Yeah, they're, they're not, but I'm very indifferent on camps. I could, yeah, I could yeah. go either way. I think way, now man. it's just like a, I take it or leave it type of thing. They've, they've adjusted them enough to where it's not like a, a thing that I, it, I feel like needs a right. lot of attention. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, and we, someone in chat, a couple of people in chat mentioned this and it's been a suggestion of ours in the past is, uh, you know, destroying camps makes sense in PVP. If you're flagged, someone should yeah. be able to burn your camp. Like, I think that's mm -hmm. well within reason. And I think maybe that feature, if they do choose to keep camps could be added to the game in a later, uh, patch or update for sure. All right, yeah. Bordy. Uh, so that's about it, dude. Again, I just, you know, I thought, you know, real one time for, for old time's sake, dude, well, let's go through these common questions. I, I you know, these are constantly being re-asked <laughs> over and over again in the Reddit. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, dude, I just think it's fun to talk about these things because I think a lot of people uh, question them. And, and dude, I, I really do think, and here's the thing that's most important. This kind of ties in the open beta conversation versus like, is the game ready for launch? And are there changes that need to be made? 
this team has been one of the most responsive, if not the most responsive teams I've ever seen to to community feedback, to making adjustments in game that make sense, that make the game, you know, uh, that improve the game or at least fix problems with the game. And I I don't question their ability to to deal with a live client. You know what I mean? If the game yeah. launches, I don't expect there to be like bugs that that last for an eternity. I think that they'll be quick about fixing them, and and you know, and each patch will implement a new, better design of the game. And and I'm just ready for that time, dude. I'm excited for the 28th, dude, for sure. I've got my PTO ready, dude, and I don't want to move Me it too. again. Yeah, uh, we're gonna no Same, life the dude. game. We're gonna neck beard the game together, right. dude. We, we yeah. We're, yeah, we're gonna uh, yeah, we're gonna play for hours on end. Our wives are gonna hate us. And, uh, no, that, that, my wife is extremely supportive. Uh, she, does, she doesn't yeah. listen to the podcast, so I, I don't have to worry about that, but I, uh, she is very supportive of my, uh, gaming habits. So, uh, yeah, dude, I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I've been looking forward to this moment for two years and I'm ready yeah, to play the game, dude. I'm excited, uh, you know, to the new world team. Uh, you know, I, I, well, I'm just ready, dude. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I think a lot of people feel the same way we do. Uh, potentially millions of people. So, yeah, let, let's on to launch. That's what I say. Uh, Bordy, why don't you tell? Well, real quick, uh, we're we're moving on to the company of the week. <laughs> All right, dude. So, uh, go ahead and and take it away. <laughs> I knew we weren't going to make it to the whole episode, man. I just knew it. All right, hey man, so I did it. Have... Don't don't you. <laughs> You did it. You you did it. It was pretty flawless, almost. All right, so we have uh, the Merc Gaming Community, man. So they are Region A. Their server is Undecided Faction Syndicate. Their language is English. Their focus is PBX. They are currently recruiting. So it says the Merc Gaming Community is looking for members to join their company. They are a syndicate company looking to enjoy all aspects of New World. It says what Merc stands for. Mercenary, Expeditionary, Requisition, and Company. So it says our company believes they are willing and able to bring their people and resources Sources to any situation. As our community grows in New World, we will play the field of battle to hold points of contentions. We'll explore and recover resources to keep supply lines flowing of materials for the syndicate faction. And we will also be, and we will also, as we grow, provide services to those who wish to hire our crews out for tasks. Examples of possible services include like resource gathering, escort players through hostile areas for both PvP and PvE. That's pretty cool. Provide dungeon and other in-game PvE runs, disruptions of opposing faction held areas, and more as the game adds new content. So they have a lot of uh, other information about their company listed here on their listing. You go check them out. Sounds like a good group of people to be a part of. The Merc Company sounds like they're pretty organized, man. They have a vision for their company. They have uh, some standards set here. Mercenary, Expeditionary, Requisition Company. I like it, dude. So the Merc Company, go check those guys out if you are wanting to play and the syndicate faction on the on the North American servers. Yes, and special thanks to the Merc Gaming Company for putting their uh, you know their advertisement on New World fans. We really appreciate that. And special thanks to all of our Patreon. Uh, you see your name after every one of our YouTube videos. A special thanks to you guys for supporting us and continuing to keep things moving uh, in the city of loot space. And and obviously with our projects New World to go and New World fans, we we appreciate you guys from the bottom of our heart. Thank you. It means a ton. Thank you to everybody who showed up to the live, uh, the live show, and thank you for watching on YouTube. Thank you for listening on the podcast platforms. Again, five-star rating, guys. We would really, really appreciate it. We can't wait to talk to you guys next week, episode 85, uh, Bordy. One one week closer to launch, dude. That'll be yeah. our last pre-launch episode. So we'll have put out 85 episodes of a podcast of a game that doesn't exist. And, and and eventually, <laughs> eventually, dude, we'll have a game. We'll be covering a game that we can play on a daily basis. And boy, oh boy, can I not wait for that? That's right. Time. We'll have eighty five more episodes in that, and some. Yeah, dude, dude we're we're looking forward yeah. to a hundred, dude. Uh, you know, our goal uh, is uh, you know we we got to we got to do episode one hundred big. That's that's got yes. that's gonna be a big milestone for us. So you know we're technically at this point uh, fifteen episodes away. So uh, we look forward to that as well. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on another episode of New World to Go.